Hey everyone, we got a short video here today. I don't know if you've heard of analemmas or not, but if you haven't, then you'll probably learn something new today. <laughs> you can always count on me to give you useless knowledge you'll probably never need to know. But in the case they find a flat earther on the streets and for some reason you decide to engage in debate, and then on top of that he or she decides to bring up analemmas, then you'll have some use for this knowledge. Otherwise, it's probably not worth it to make space in your brain to retain this information. You're better off remembering that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Ha, <laughs> just kidding, that one's useless too. Whoa, how did the sun draw a figure 8 in the sky? My mind just got absolutely blown. So yeah, this is the analemma. At first glance, you probably would think this is seen somewhere in the poles for a period of time, but it's actually not. The video here kind of gives off the illusion that this is a fast-forwarded video. In reality, you get this motion when you take a picture of the sun at the same time every day, on the same spot of the earth. More on this later. Oh, those darn ballers. Why do they have to go and believe in the actual shape of the earth instead of subscribing to something proven false centuries ago? Look, what you have here is a bit misleading. Like I mentioned earlier, the analemma occurs when you take a snapshot of the earth at the same time every day from the same spot. It's not continuous, and every time you do so, the sun very slightly shifts in the sky a bit. It's not always in the same position every day. Then, when you compile these photos together and play it one by one, then you see the sun move in a figure 8 across the sky. It's pretty simple, yet in your simulation diagram here, you're moving the earth as if it shakes and tilts in a figure 8 pattern while just having one side of the earth face the sun at all times. That's simply not the case. Even though you have the earth rotating, your diagram makes absolutely no sense because the sun is not spinning with the background, but rather staying where the camera is. Many people may fall for this, but not us. Also, I'm not sure what you expected here. If people just typed in analemma in Google, they would know your fraud. Now, I do recognize that you do actually know how they work. You just chose to be dishonest here because you have an explanation later on. Let's get to that. See, you're continuing that dishonest claim here with that statement. The earth is still spinning. The analemma would only show you that after every rotation, the sun's position in the sky is just ever so slightly off. And then when you draw the line between every day sun position for a year, then you get a figure 8 pattern. That's it. The earth is still spinning. Your claim is like saying a train is moving 200 kilometers per hour, but then it accelerates to 201 kilometers per hour. And suddenly you're claiming that the one kilometer per hour increase did not happen because if it did, the passengers would fly off. It's so stupid. Of course, you're not actually saying that because you're trying to trick the audience into thinking the figure 8 in the sky is continuous, not a snapshot every 24 hours, which is simply the dumbest thing I've ever seen anyone attempt. And I have responded to a lot of flat earthers. Okay, so this is probably a good time for me to briefly explain how analemmas occur. It's actually pretty simple. The biggest reason for its shape and why it rises and dips is because of Earth's axis tilt. Yep, just the tilt itself is responsible for a lot of interesting phenomena on Earth. Anyway, when the Earth rotates around the Sun over a year, if you're in the northern or southern hemispheres, you take turns in tilting towards the Sun and tilting away from the Sun. As you know already, that is what causes seasons to occur. Now, if you look at an analemma, you can see where the Sun is at each time of the year. The flat earther here actually has a diagram which we can use. There it is. So yeah, as you saw, December is at the top while July is at the bottom. Now this diagram is actually flipped. In the northern hemisphere, which I assume most of you are at, the sun is towards the top during the winter and at the bottom during the summer. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. When you're in the northern hemisphere and you're tilting away from the sun aka winter, then the sun is relatively closer to the horizon, thus being at the bottom of the figure 8. During the summer, the sun is higher up in the sky, so it's towards the top of the figure 8. So in simple terms, that's what causes the vertical motion. So what about the horizontal motion? Also very simple. It's actually 
likely due to the difference in time, specifically between the solar and local times. When the Earth rotates around once, that's 24 hours for us, but in reality, when the Earth spins, it also moves slightly along the path of the Sun. As a result, just spinning around once isn't enough, but rather it needs to spin just ever so slightly more to have the same spot of the Earth face the Sun again. So if we use local times to take a snapshot of the Sun every day, then there's bound to be horizontal movement. Now at this point, you're probably wondering why the figure 8 looks the way it does. Why is it that one of the lobes is greater than the other? That's because during the Earth's orbit around the Sun, it actually moves closer and further away. The perihelion, aka closest to the Sun, the Earth is experiencing winter time on the Northern Hemisphere. And the aphelion, aka furthest from the Sun, the Earth is experiencing summer on the Northern Hemisphere. So during the summer, due to this great distance, the difference between the solar and local times are smaller, thus the Sun appears to travel less in the sky. Meanwhile, during winter and being closer to the Sun, the difference is more obvious. So yeah, I hope you understood all of that. If you do want to go into more depth and actually look at some of the math that goes into this, I recommend reading up on some of the online sources to learn more. Wikipedia is always a great start. Anyway, that's how the NLM works on Earth. The real question now is, how does it work on a flat Earth? See, the flat earther does know what the analemma is, he just chose to be dishonest about it and tried to trick people using false diagram simulations. <laughs> okay. I'm guessing you decided not to have the diagram show you in real time what it looks like since the sun is moving through the figure 8 way too quickly for how fast it's rotating around the earth. It's funny how when you're showing the round earth you seem to completely misunderstand what an analemma is, but now that you're showing it on the flat earth, suddenly you seem to know. That's how I can tell you're purposely trying to mislead people. Anyway, yeah, sure, I guess you can have that work on a flat earth, only in the northern hemisphere that is. In the southern hemisphere, people see the figure 8 upside down. Winter is towards the top, summer is towards the bottom, and the fat part of the figure 8 is the bottom half as well. How do you explain that on a flat earth? Anyway, that's the end of the video today. Thank you to Fireshard, Alan Morton, JN, and Misfixit. We'll have a longer video next week, I promise.